Good we're, we're delighted that you uh, uh, decided to spend some time with us this, this afternoon. Um, you guys, as district chairs, are the heart and soul of CART. You really are, because you, you, you provide our message to the, to the clubs in your district, and we deeply appreciate everything that you do, and we appreciate your joining us this afternoon. I um, want to welcome two of our newest CART chairs, uh, who are, I don't see them with us tonight, but I'm still going to welcome them. Um, Walt Hall has recently uh, volunteered to serve as the district cart chair for 70, 7545, which is West Virginia. Um, and um, Natra Shankar has volunteered to serve as cart chair for district 6270, which is Wisconsin. And so we welcome both of those to our family of cart and hopefully they will be joining us in the future. Uh, um, one item I'd like to just toss out to you tonight. Um, one of the places that we want to have a CART presence is at district conferences. And to work toward doing that, um, we need to know where these conferences are and when they're going to happen. Um, and so, I have a list of conferences, but it's not at all complete. In fact, it's probably about half complete. So if you could do me a really big favor, if you could reach out to your district leadership and find out the, the dates and the locations of your upcoming conferences and send those to me or to Tiffany or to both. Um, some conferences occur in the fall, some in the spring. So whenever your next conference will be, if you could let us know that, that would be absolutely wonderful. So thank you. Tiffany? Great. And I would also like to say another special welcome. Um, for those of you who do not know, um, our our executive secretary, not exe our secretary on our board um, had to step down um, in the middle of this term. And so we are honored and thrilled that Carol Burdett has agreed to step into that role as secretary of our board. And she is with us tonight. And you guys have heard her previously when she has spoken to this group. And she has such a great cart story to tell. And we are so excited, Carol, to have you join us. And I'm just thrilled that you said yes and that Rod didn't have to bruise your arm too badly, but um, we are so excited to have you. So a special thank you to her and you guys will be hearing more from her, I'm sure. So I have a couple of quick uh, dates and things to share with you. All of these are already in the DACDB calendar. So you can go online now and register. Just make sure that you have selected multi-district events when you look at the calendar. But we have our next two district chairs meetings. Um, that will be on November the 9th and then December the 8th. So those are the next two that'll get us through the end of this calendar year. And I'm gonna throw an idea out there. I know it scares y'all when I say I have an idea, but my idea is to ask you for ideas, okay? We call this monthly meeting our district chairs and more, but maybe we could come up with a new cute name or something that is more applicable to what this really is because it is for our district chairs to get a lot of information, but we invite and include and they attend our district governor chain um, and anyone from any club who is interested in learning more. I know several of the folks on with us are club chairs as well. So I think we need a new name other than our district chairs meeting because I think that may intimidate some folks from joining us. So if you have any ideas for that, let me know that as well. But those next dates, again, they're already on the calendar are November 9th and December 8th. And just a reminder, if you will register there, it will send you an email the very next day after you register and it'll give you the Zoom link. And it will send you a, an email one day before the event with another reminder and another link to the Zoom. Um, but if you register the day of, you're not gonna get those probably. But um, if you will do that, that will help keep it up at the top of your email list um, and that would be great. So we also have two more lunch a la carts scheduled and those are also in DACTB. And the next one is gonna be on November the 15th, which is a Tuesday. And that is with Catherine, Dr. Catherine Diaz Asper. She's from Marymount University in Virginia. And she received a, a grant in 2020 for $125,000. 
And um, she's going to be our speaker on Tuesday, the 15th of November. And in December, December the 12th, which is going to be a Monday, you see we're moving these dates around a little bit. Um, that's going to be Dr. Susan Cage from the Salk Institute. And she is going, she was a recipient of $300,000 grant in 2021. So these are some more of our more recent grant recipients, whereas the first two that we had were from many, many years ago. Um, and they're going to give us some updates on what their research is looking like, what we're learning um, in the Alzheimer's field. So um, put those dates on your calendar. Uh, we'll be creating um, Facebook events for them as well. So you can share them on your club pages. I think we have one of them done. I don't think I've gotten the second one done yet. Um, but please share those. Invite other people who are non-Rotarians to join us. Um, and we would love to have a great turnout for both of those. And then we'll have some more starting in January. Um, last month, we talked a little bit about um, our annual meeting. And we talked about the fact that we're going to give you um, a, a, an RFP, an opportunity for you to propose where we have the meetings. And, and uh, the verbiage of those proposals got a little bogged down, but it's finally finished. And uh, Tiffany's going to send that out to the district chairs uh, this week. Um, but let me just let me just give you a, a kind of a highlight. Um, our district meeting, our, our annual meeting, excuse me, is typically um, the first part of May. In fact, it's typically around May the 3rd or 4th. Uh, and it's typically in Columbia, South Carolina. And so we've had lots and lots of feedback from, from all kinds of folks. Why don't we move it somewhere else? And we're willing to do that, uh, but we need you to tell us where it can go. And when you see this proposal, it's fairly detailed uh, in terms of where you would like to have it, the city, uh, the hotel, um, the city has got to have an airport uh, or an airport close by because lots of folks are going to be coming in, particularly our, our researchers. Um, this past year, 2022, we had researchers from uh, the Midwest, the West Coast, and the Northeast. And so they all got to come from somewhere. And so you need a, a place for them to, to come to uh, with, a, with a close by airport. The venue that you choose has to have a place for a meeting. Um, it has to have um, food close by. It has to have a place for reception where we can meet and greet with the researchers. Uh, it has to have the ability to have um, uh, recording as well as uh, hybrid uh, for those folks who cannot physically be in the room. And there's some other requirements that are on the sheet and we, will, we want you to consider uh, where you might want to propose we have it uh, and give us back this proposal. Um, and we really want you also to, to communicate with your district leadership. In fact, the proposal, we want you to have the district governor decide it, saying to us that that district governor is supporting the idea of having the CART meeting in his or her district. Uh, so when these go out, just read it over. Give us some great ideas because we'd really like to consider um, where you would like to hold this meeting. Uh, and so we're looking forward to your input. So Tiffany. All right, any questions about that before we move on? Uh, does this document, Rod, have what CART pays for and what uh, the, the district is gonna be to have to pay for? Does it, does it spread, does it tell the you that? The document, Norm, pretty much spells out what we, um, what answers that question? Yes, sir. Right. Okay. So there, there's nothing that CART pays for, and there's nothing that districts would pay for, but the cost would have to be covered by a registration fee. Um, so whoever attends would have to cover that. That registration fee would have to cover all of the costs because CART does not have a budget for the event. Right. Um, but we don't expect districts to put out money and and pay for it out of their pocket either. So Towards as you're looking at at a proposal for us. <laughs> Look at the economics of the situation. My question: Jordan, What's the normal? What's the normal uh, attendance number? People attend. Uh, so we put that in the document for you as well that we'll share. Um, but pre-COVID is the best numbers that we have, <laughs> and they've always been held in Columbia. So it's it's going to be a little bit of a skewed number because it's always been in the same place. But pre-COVID, we would have in excess of 100, 150 people that would come. Um, and then we went virtual for 2020 and 2021. So 2022 was the first year we were back in person and we made it a hybrid event and we had about 50 people in person. 
Um, so the numbers are going to be hard to use that as a judge, unfortunately, because pre-COVID and post-COVID and always in the same location in the district that started CART. So they've always heavily supported it as well. So that's going to be a little bit of a challenge to, to estimate. But if you make it a great price and a great venue where people want to travel to and um, and you sell it and you get your district to support it, then it could absolutely be somewhere other than Columbia. Yeah. Did, did that help, George? Yeah, uh, again, just trying to get an idea for uh, the search of what mm -hmm. type of venue, you know, and, and what needs to be accommodated. Thank sure. I think we have all of that in the document for you, and I will email that to all of you guys um, with the link to this video as soon as I get it uploaded. And that should be, you know, if not tomorrow, then Thursday. And we'd like to have it back by December, that, that RFP, if you're planning to do that, by December 15th. But if there's something missing from it that we didn't think of, we've had a lot of people looking at this. If we miss something, you guys let us know. Okay. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is a uh, public image update, and I'm going to go through the first part of it, and then Aaron is going to um, do the second part for you. So a little bit of a history for you guys, and this is a presentation I've already given to the executive committee, um, but as many of you know, our CART logo um, has has been changed many, many times. And I actually have a presentation that I'm gonna share with you. So I'm going to share my screen. So we're gonna talk about branding and imaging for the CART Fund. And just so you know kind of how this came up. For years, we've had this discussion as to whether or not we're supposed to be using the Rotary Cog and the Rotary logo with our, um, our CART logo. And what happened is in 2017, uh, the Rotary International Board of Directors made a decision that they were going to start cracking down on people who were not supposed to be using the Rotary logo as part of their logo. And so in summer of 22, this year, when we were in Houston, they had a group of folks who work in their branding and imaging department who literally went booth to booth in the um, in the House of Friendship, inspecting every booth, making sure that they were all in compliance and making notes. And we had a great booth there that we shared with um, the Rotary Action Group, Alzheimer's Dementia Rotary Action Group. And so technically they were the sponsor and we were a participant, but our materials were there. And we got on the list of one of many organizations that is a great organization to support and works great with Rotary clubs and Rotary districts and zones, but is not technically a Rotary International partner. And that's what started the conversation earlier this year, right about the time I took this job. So that was a, a great um, introduction to uh, working with this organization was having to work with Rotary International to say, okay, well, if we're not doing it right, what are we doing right and what can we do better? So I'm going to share with you tonight a little bit of an update from that very quickly. We're not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I want to make sure that everyone has the exact same information um, that Rotary's trademark and logo is copyrighted and it is only allowed to be used by Rotary International partners or clubs, districts, and zones. Um, and what they put out every year is a style book with guidelines on how to use their logo, what colors you're allowed to use, and all of those things. If you work with your public image team in your district, you know that there are certain styles and guidelines that you have to adhere to. And the same is true with Rotary International. So when we started looking at all of the various cart logos that were out there, just a quick Google search helped me find at least nine or 10 different Rotary uh, and CART logos, which you can see on the screen. Um, there's eight here on this picture. Um, and literally you can see that they're all a little bit different. And um, I, I will admit that when I started us using this lockup with the CART logo, I thought we were doing better. I did not really understand that we were not supposed to be using the Rotary logo with ours. Um, and so after a long conversation with uh, Rotary International, uh, they're very excited that we want to work with them, that we want to work with clubs and districts and zones, um, but they want us to do it the right way. And what they explained to me is that there are certain organizations that go through a rigorous process in order to be named a Rotary International Partner. These are an example of some of the Rotary International Partners. And you can see these are national or international organizations that do goodwill and do projects around the globe, whether it's Habitat or Toastmasters or USAID or Shelterbox. Um, you can see how those organizations would qualify as an international partner. 
And without going through that rigorous process, which we would not meet and which would cost us a lot of money to apply, we recognize that we're not a Rotary International partner, but we are an important partner of many Rotary clubs, many Rotary districts, and for the most part, our Rotary zones, zones 33 and 34. And so when I say that we shouldn't be using the Rotary logo in our official logo, it's not that we're never allowed to use it, it's that we need to be using it as part of a club project or part of a district project. So if uh, the Rotary Club of Wilmington is doing a fundraiser for CART, they can use their logo with the CART logo. Um, if the Rotary District 7670 is doing a fundraiser for CART, they can use their district logo with a CART logo. So all of that to be said that we started thinking about what is our image and what is our brand. And we've been around for 20 years. And as you saw, our logo has changed several times and we don't have a consistent brand. And Erin will speak to this a little bit later, but any of you who have worked in public relations or branding or, or any organization know that your brand is really, really critical that people know what it is and know how to find you and that it becomes very visual. And that's one of the reasons that Rotary International is working so hard to um, get people to use the correct logo for their logo as well, even though it changed, um, what are we now, seven years ago, and people are still using the old Rotary cog and old Rotary logo. So we put together a committee of club and district public image chairs, um, some professionals that are outside of Rotary but have experience in this area. And we put together a focus group who put together um, a, some proposed logos that we went back and forth and back and forth. And um, we, we finally came up with a logo that we are thrilled to unveil to you guys. Some of you may have seen it already. We presented it to the uh, executive committee last month. And um, this is going to be the new logo for CART. And so I'm so thrilled um, with how it turned out. And Aaron Sines designed this. He gets all the credit for this. Um, he worked with a great team that gave us input. Um, but one of the things we felt strongly about for this logo was using the little blue bucket because that is still our signature. And it's one of those things that sets us apart. Um, so we have different versions of the logo, as you'll see. The one with the words underneath will be our main logo that we will use. But if you could imagine putting that on a one inch pen, it would be very difficult to read. So the one in the bottom right corner that does not have the words written out, it just has the acronym, that will be the version that will be made into a new pen. And then this square version here is something that we will use, say, for a, um, if you wanted to put it beside your lockup with your, um, with your district, your club logo, you could also use it for a profile picture on Facebook, Instagram, things like that, because of the square, we wanted to have both options. And if you go back and look, um, you see all of these folks have that same version as well. So we are really moving into the 21st century with this, and I'm really excited about it. Um, it's something that you can use um, in print. You can use it as an embroidered um, item. Um, you can use it as a visual. We're really excited about, um, about moving forward with this Lego. Now, um, when I turn it over to Aaron in just a second, he's going to talk to you about what's next for rolling this out. Um, and how we're gonna do it, but not only just having a new logo, but having a new image and some branding guidelines that we're gonna ask folks to use. It's not that we're trying to be in charge of everyone. It's not that we're trying to be dictators and tell you what you must do, but we want everyone to look at something and automatically say, oh my gosh, that's the CART fund. That's the people that are helping to find a cure for Alzheimer's. Um, so we're gonna be developing those guidelines in the next few months that we'll share with you. We have a new website that'll be rolling out the 1st of November. And of course, because we're going to be taking the rotary cog off, that means that a lot of our older materials are going to have to be replaced. I've had a long discussion with Rotary International, and they recognize that we're not going to be able to throw everything away tomorrow and start off with new items because that would be very, very expensive. And obviously, we don't have that kind of money. Um, they understand that. But the pins, the buckets, we have some plans in place for how we're going to be rolling those out in an increment basis, incremental basis. And we're really excited to be sharing that with you as they come along. The pins, most of the other items will all be available as part of an online store where you can print on demand or you can order on demand, have it shipped directly to you. Um, we're working with one of the RI vendors to create the pin so that you can order them in quantity there. But one of the things that we feel very strongly about through CART is is that because that little blue bucket is our signature, we're going to continue to provide those at no cost to our clubs. And that's going to be a little bit of a, basically a lot of an expense. And we'll be sharing more with you about that as that moves on, because it's not something that will happen tomorrow. 
our Rotary International is perfectly understanding of the fact that we have a lot of inventory on hand and we're going to need to use that, but we're starting to, to dwindle down in some of those inventories. And this will be a great time for us to start um, replacing some of those items one thing at a time. Um, you guys know Aaron did that great uh, PowerPoint template for you guys, and he's going to be updating that with the new logo. So we'll be sending that to all of you as well. We're also creating a template for a display that you can use when you go to your district conference or when we're at pets or when we're um, at any other kind of venue that has a festival or a fair. Um, and we're going to ask you all to be the beginning of our brand ambassadors, that you will help us figure out um, how to share our message and, and how to how to make sure that people know who we are and what we do and that you, we don't just ask you to do it all for us. We're looking for other brand ambassadors as well, people who can really help us to share our message. All right, so Aaron Sines is our Vice President of Public Image, and he's worked so hard on this, and we owe him a huge thank you. And his work is not done, as you can tell, because now he has to redo the, the PowerPoint and, and the background for you guys so that we all have a new background to use for our uh, Zoom calls and so many other things that he's working on. But um, I'm going to turn it over to him now. Uh, but to talk about the logo real quick, um, even though we aren't in the Rotary logo, I thought it was important to keep some Rotary in that. That's why we went with Rotary approved colors um, because CART started with Rotarians and as part of Rotary clubs. No, we're not an official partner. I thought it was important for us to keep that. That's the way it ties it all together. That's why we went with the colors that we went with. Just a little background on that. Um, so I'm going to create a Canva folder um, where we can have everything related in that. So for your templates, the logos, uh, Zoom backgrounds, anything you might need, you'll have the link to go in there, be able to print off, download. Uh, you won't be able to make changes. We don't want everybody changing everything. Um, if you do need something specific, where if you need help putting your club logo, your district logo on it or whatever, I'd be more than happy to help out, reach out to me and I can help you with that. That's not a problem, but we wanna make everything as um, across the board as possible. Um, you know, when we're talking about public images, everybody knows, same with our rotary story, same with the art story. You know, I might be the vice president of public image, nice little title, but all the public image starts with you. So if we start using the correct stuff, everybody will start using the correct stuff. Just like I tried to tell my district, you know, the Rotary logo, it's been out for 13 years. It's not new anymore. Get over it, buy a new shirt. You know, it's okay to throw away old stuff. Um, and it's not going to be something that just happens overnight because it's full of stuff, waste of that stuff. Uh, but here or not, we need to make sure we're using the correct stuff. So it be Rotary and for our own branding. I mean, that's, it. and if you guys have any ideas of things that you might need, you know, if, if it's something you don't have, you can say, hey, I could really use this, I could use this, you know, reach out, let me know, we can create something, we can, you know, show you how to create stuff. All right, it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of work on Aaron's part in the next few months, um, getting everything redone, if you will. So if you, we will all be patient with him, but if there is something in particular that you need, please let him know. Or um, I am very limited in my Canva ability, um, but I, I, Kevin is exactly right. This is a great opportunity to talk about something new. Thank you for saying that. Um, I was speaking to a club today, and I said we have big news coming, and it's a great opportunity um, for us to start a new conversation. Thank the you so thing, much. If you do need something, if, if you do need something and you email me, I don't get back to you. I apologize. I am horrible at replying to emails because, as we all know, we get a bunch of them. So do not be hesitant to say, hey, you never got back to me. And if you do, I apologize, but that's life. So. Big, huge thank you to Aaron. Right, thank you so much. Yep. All right, so Angus McDuffie is next. He is our cart treasurer. And I had asked him, because we are officially in the second quarter now, to give us an update on where we stand at the end of first quarter. The end of September 2022, our uh, cash position was 436406 
at the in 2021 it was 467. So we're running a little bit behind um, 21. October, I've, I've already got, October of 21 was 536, 990. Uh, we're not going to get close to that, but we, I think we, we're on a trajectory, it looks like, to catch up to uh, last year, um, which is a good thing. I also um, have through year to date, figures on districts and y'all need to get hopping because 7770 that's my district is $40,955 the closest one to it is 7680 with 15428 and then the next one is 6910 with 11201 and then 6920 with with 10, 965. So y'all need to get hot. The cash position statement is based on bank accounts. So that is actual money. So as of September, 2022, our, our cash position, or that is the amount of money we have free to um, use for grants is 436,406. Good news. Okay. Good news is I'm getting less and less checks from other districts. Um, and when I get them, I'm sending them a notice saying you need to do that, you know, send that to your district chair. I know a couple of them that send me checks because they because it's easier and that's fine. But um, we're getting there. We want to say a special thank you to the districts that are in first place, but it's early and a little healthy competition is good for everyone. And there are a lot of districts that are going through a lot of other things right now. And we recognize that as well. Um, there's been a lot of uh, disasters and a lot and, and polio has resurged um, and there's been the turnover with the new year. So um we, we do want to say thank you to those of you who are getting your donations in. But as um, as Kevin mentioned earlier, this is a great opportunity for us to have another message to go out. Hey, we have a, um, an, even if it's just visiting clubs to say um, we have a new logo um, and do you understand how to use the portal and all of those things. So um, we, I think using our public image will be a great way to increase our donations, just like Rotary International does with the Rotary Foundation and Polio um, and membership, it'll, it'll be the same process. And um, we're definitely making great strides. You have heard us talk about before the new recurring giving program that we were introducing this year. And our executive committee decided to name that um, in honor or memory of our founder, Roger Ackerman, and anyone who makes a recurring gift through the donor portal would be a member of what we are calling the Roger Ackerman Circle. And so there's been some discussion about it. Um, obviously, statistics, if you've ever been involved in fundraising or nonprofit management at all, you will understand and you will agree that anyone who becomes a recurring donor is more likely to um, remain consistent, also more likely likely to be a better advocate for your organization. It's not just about the dollars, it's about the long tradition of, of supporting an organization as well. Um, and if we can get people in that habit of doing it just like we do for the Rotary Foundation. Um, during my presentations that I make, and I'm making a lot of them these days, I remind people that we are not trying to take the place of contributions to Polio. To Polio Plus is still the number one funding priority of Rotary International. And we have to, we recognize that, we wanna support that, but there are some very generous people in our organization. And um, as Bill Parker was saying earlier, you never know when you tell someone what organization you're involved with, that Alzheimer's might be something that touches their heart and they might like to be involved either as a member of a Rotary Club that does that or participating in one of our events or contributing financially. Um, and we're always looking for more volunteers as well. So if you have folks that say, I would love to help out with that organization, um, just pass those names along to me. But we are excited because we have a new pin that we have purchased 500 of them and they are going to be available to the first 500 people. How's that for a goal? The first 500 people to um, sign up to become a recurring donor are going to get a copy of this pin. And if you follow our Facebook page, you have seen that we have already started giving some out when we were in Baltimore a few weeks ago. 
And um, I want to just issue a challenge to everyone on this call that if you have not yet agreed to do that, it is only a minimum of $5 a month as a recurring gift. Now, I had someone say to me this week, she said, I don't want to do $5 a month. I'm just going to give you $60 and be done. Well, the point of this is to make it a recurring gift. So I've asked her to commit to a $60 annual gift because you can select if you want your recurring donation to be monthly, quarterly, or annually. So if that's the way you want to do it, that's fine with us, but set it up to be a never ending, repetitive, recurring gift. And we will get you a, a copy of one of these pins. The process for getting these out is going to be a little, um, little complicated. Um, we're going to start sending some out to some district chairs who are interested and willing to go to their clubs and present them. Um, some of them I'm able to do when I'm traveling. Some of them our executive committee members are able to do when they're traveling. And some of them we may simply have to mail uh, to uh, someone else in their club and ask them to present it and take a picture. But our goal is to put 500 on our Facebook page. Now, I'm going to be very honest that sometimes it's a husband and wife. Um, as, as an example of our past president, Woody Sadler, and his wife, Lori, I gave both of them pins. So they only counted as one. So it's technically not going to be 500 pins. But you know what? If we get to 490 and I need a few more pins, we'll order them uh, because that's what it's all about. And so if you've seen those pictures on Facebook, um, you may have seen some of them already. But let me just show you what it looks like. It's a minimum of $5 a month. It is a, a, a horizontal pin instead of vertical. So it looks a little bit different than the previous pins that we've always had. Again, it's a minimum of $5 a month. Um, and Johnny Hilton, uh, our vice president of finance, has issued this challenge that every member of the executive committee uh, become a recurring donor. We are working on that. We would love to issue the challenge that every district chair become a recurring donor because it then gives you an opportunity to share that with your clubs when you go and speak. Um, but we, uh, we're happy to help if you have questions about how to do that in the, in the donor portal. Um, I will say that in May of this year, we were at 32 when I took this job. And as of today, we're at 50. So we're definitely growing. Um, we have a little ways to go. But um, my goal it's a little bit of a lofty goal, so I'm going to ask you guys to help us, is to have 100 in the first 100 days. And technically, we started giving them out and in Baltimore, which was the last week in September. So I'm going to say from now till the end of this year would be about 100 days. So our goal is to get 100 before the end of December, and we're halfway there. So I hope that some of you will go online. Um, and if you have any trouble doing it, you can talk to Michelle or me, or um, some of you know how to work the portal as well. And we're happy to help you do that. But that is our goal to get to the first 100 by the end of this calendar year. And um, I'm starting to give them out and um, take pictures with folks. We want to put a picture of every single person that gets one on our Facebook page and uh, and share that. So the recurring, the recurring donor gifts are not the clubs, they're individual people. Um, today I had someone who was a club person make a club donation that she put in as a monthly donation, but it's really, it's really their donation for the month. So these recurring gifts are individual gifts. Um, and I wanna take the opportunity, Tiffany, to thank you. If you haven't had a chance to see the attachment to the um, email that you got about this meeting today, Randy Nielsen does a fabulous job of sending out stuff each month. I haven't had a chance yet, but Kara, who's not on here, um, had an opportunity. And I saw in an email where she swipe steal with integrity and praise every day. She has an acronym called swipe. So feel free to do it. I know I'm going to get on there and just copy and paste and add some things and challenge. Um, I'm going to get ready to challenge each one of my clubs chairs cart chairs to get at least three they can get three recurring gifts i have like 50 clubs that's 150 if i can get that going so i'm going to run a challenge between now and the end of the year to try and do that so it's kind of simple if there are any questions or problems you know that i am with terry the cart portal administrator so it does come to me so if there is a problem then um i will call the person and make it right well, we have unveiled a new logo. We have new imaging coming. Uh, the one thing that I think would be interesting is if we can get these done in the next few months, 
we could roll these out at all of the pets next spring because every district has a pets, whether it's by themselves or a multi-district pets. And that would be the ideal time to give everybody new buckets because all the presidents have to be there. So um, send good thoughts and keep your fingers crossed. I'm, I'm working behind the scenes to see if we can um, find a sponsor for those buckets and put a corporate logo on there so that we don't have to pay for them since we don't have a, a budget for that. So, um, but if anybody has any contacts with something like that, then let me know. But we're, um, we're working on some, some contacts that we've got there. We're going to be rolling that out. We're going to be rolling out the new pins. Uh, the new website, as I mentioned, will have a shop page where you can um, download some things. You can order some things. I will say this, that the website um, is a lot of work and it's a web, it's a work in progress. So everything may not be on there when it first starts because we don't have the new buckets and things like that, but we'll be adding things monthly. Um, so I hope that you'll be patient with us. If you see errors, just send me an email and say, hey, I was just on the about us page and there's a typo, or I was on the such and such page and that sentence dropped off or the picture didn't work or whatever. Let me know those things. thing is, I'm afraid I have got some bad news. I sent out a new flyer three weeks ago. It had a new credit card company attached to it that I changed. We have sold one ticket. So what Angus said before about you guys are going to have to get on it. Uh, I would like some help with this cart uh, of cars for cart. Or I'm just going to shut it down if I'm not going to get any help. So thank you. All right. Thank you, Norm. We appreciate all that you do. Do any of you other guys have some district fundraisers that you're working on that you need us to help with? You need us to promote? Um, I, I spoke to a club today um, who was at zero giving so far this year, which is not that unusual, um, but for this time of year necessarily, but they were a zero giving club last year. And I was able to tell them that the club down the street from them is number one in their district right now. And that motivated them a little bit. So sometimes some healthy competition is good. Um, and so um, if you need help pulling numbers out of the, out of the portal, um, we certainly suggest that every district chair pull a report monthly and review it to make sure that nothing is missing from your district district um, or that something is has been incorrectly attributed to another club. Um, and, and I'm looking at um, the, the recurring donor you know, report regularly. Michelle is looking at all the other reports. When people enter something in and it doesn't go through, she is really quick to get on the phone with them and try to help them correct it. She can clear that out so that it starts over. Um, so we're here to help you guys with all of that. About, um, Rod mentioned your district conferences, um, which some of them are in the fall. I spoke to one a few weeks ago, but there's a lot of them are in the spring. And if you would like to have a CART researcher at your conference, if you will reach out to me and let me know that, um, either have your district conference chair or your district chair or uh, your district governor or yourself, reach out to me and let me let me know that you've talked to your district governor or your district conference chair and they're on board with it. Um, we can help you connect with some of these folks. They love to travel um, and share their story. Um, and uh we would be happy to help you facilitate that for anyone who is interested in doing that. It's a great way. Um, it's great to hear from us, you know, but it's even better for them to hear from one of the researchers. That's what they really want to hear.